Well, welcome back to Tech Garage, presented to you by rockauto.com. Folks, it's the final stage of disassembly of our LS Lesson engine. I can't wait to get this beast back together, but a couple more stages to go. Yeah, we actually took the pistons out here, and we got some of the main caps off and ready to go just to make it speedier, but we left one in just to show you how. Before we took the piston out, the first thing we had to do is take this ridge ream off. Well, what's a ridge ream? Well, the piston goes down in here, and it creates this big lip right here. So we don't want to knock the piston out because that'll definitely break the piston. So rockauto.com, I got this ridge reamer tool, pretty simple, fits in there. What you do is tighten it up till it's a little snug in the cylinder. Snug. When it's a little bit snug, now I'm gonna come back here and I'm simply going around. And when I'm going around, I'm actually cutting the cylinder. So I'm cutting, tightening, cutting, tightening, cutting, tightening. So eventually when I pull it out of here, you'll see you can actually hear it. Whoa. It's working. Mm -hmm. And a couple of these cylinders had more of a shelf and a ridge than others. Right. So it really does make a difference. Yep. Take it out of there. And you can see it's been cut there, so that's good news. Perfect. Now the piston's able to come out. So, yep. Brian, time yep. to put a little muscle in it. We're going to come around your way right here. There you there go. go. Beautiful. You got one main cap bolting just for safety. You don't want that crank falling out on your toes. That's going to be a bad day. Exactly. Now, ours are already stamped, but, you know, if you got one from the factory, they may not be stamped. You want to mark them just for indexing them when you put them back together. Just another safety practice it that is. we always like to use. Right there. Awesome. Good. So they're takes. stamped. Now what we'll do is just, I got these loose already. We're yep. going to take this rod cap off. And when we take this rod cap off, you may have some studs protruding there. You can take a little rubber hose and put it on there so you don't gouge up the cylinders or anything mm -hmm. like that. But ours doesn't. Ours is just the bolts back down to the actual connecting rods I'll there. It okay. Yeah, that's perfect, man. There you, you go. I think you've done this before. Yeah, well, time or two. <laughs> we'll keep it. that one obviously go. match with this. I like to use a little hammer here, a little blunt tool, and just now that that ridge is gone, this guy should come right out at you. Here we go, ready? Yep. One, two, three, catch. Perfect, got it. Look at that. You didn't even knock the bearing out. I'm impressed. Yeah, that's cool. All right, there's a good look at the guts right there. Now, here's something really interesting. Let's come over here and look. We talked about evidence and kind of our own forensics all along the way in this project. Here you go, folks. There's the top of the piston right there where something, probably an electrode off of a spark plug, got loose, rattled, and banged in there. Look on the head. There's the mirroring action. Here's what it would look like. Imagine that piston doing its work with a little piece of steel floating around in there. Damage, damage. So we'll get all that buttoned up, get this thing get taken care of, and get it back on the road. Same thing with the main caps, man. They're all in order. They're all specified. They're in the right direction. Really important. So I'm going to take number three off. It says number three is stamped. If not, go ahead and stamp it. Pretty cool here. You can actually see the thrust bearing. We'll yeah. talk about that when we put it back together. But that keeps the crank from going back and forth. That's pretty cool. See if you ate your Wheaties. Got that out. Let's go a little. Arr, come out of there. Uh, yeah. Mm, that makes steal. it look easy. I'll never hear the end of that. Man, that's something. There All right. We go. Got a Rock Auto engine stand. Come back around. Nice. All right. Time to hone. Man, we're in good shape. But before we measure, we want to put a cross hatch pattern in these cylinders so we can go ahead and hone them. Pretty simple. We're going to do a little cross hatch with this one. This is just like a little, basically a glaze breaker. We're not going in there and making it any bigger. But what you want to do is put it in there, and then you can go ahead and run it up and down, up and down. And you'll see the difference when I pull it out. So I'm going to run it. A little PB blaster in there to get it lubed up and nice and going. Nice. And then once I get done with that, stop it. Don't pull it out because your beads will fly. And when I wipe this down, you should see a pretty noticeable difference right here. And that looks nice. I almost eat a meal off of that. Now here's where that inspection comes in, Brian. I mean, now we can go. Now we're going to get a clean block. We're going to clean it up. We're going to make sure before we go too far and we can go in and make a bunch of measurements. There's a ton of measurements. When Absolutely. You... And the hot soap and water is going to get us where we need to be. Wife's a little angry. I stole her bucket. But that's okay. We're going to get this thing nice and clean. Absolutely. Hot, soapy water. That's the key. Well, stick around. Garage Ed's coming up, and we're talking to one of the biggest players when it comes to the input. That's the oxygen sensor. Plenty more Tech Garage brought to you by rockauto.com.